Hello, my name is Trisha. Welcome to my channel, Career Clinic with Trisha. It's so good to have you back here once again. Today we are discussing the issue of work and family life. We are talking about how to manage your career and your family life. And with us to do this discussion is Mrs. Yvonne Redu Akpagli. She is a seasoned HR practitioner with over 12 years experience in HR practice. She's married with children. She's a philanthropist who runs an NGO that takes care of the less privileged in society. She's passionate about helping people to ace interviews. She's very passionate about driving performance at the workplace. She loves technology and farming, and she also loves having fun. So if you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. So you get notified of our next video. If you are ready, let's go talk to Mrs. Yvonne Redu at Publi. I will start by reading out the letters that we have and then um, invite our guests in to shed light on the issues that we'll raise here. It says, Dear Trisha, I'm married to a career woman who does not seem to realize that her career is affecting our marriage. I have drawn her attention to this in more ways than you can imagine, yet she seems not to care. She has placed her career above our marriage and even our kids. She leaves the house very early to work and comes back very late at night. Sometimes she even works, goes to work on weekends, claiming that she had unfinished business to attend to. She has left the caring of her children in the hands of a nanny. I love my wife and I appreciate her hard work. In fact, that was what attracted me to her in the first place. But I'm afraid this workaholic attitude of my wife will wreak havoc in our marriage and family, if not checked. How do I get my wife to make time for the family before it is too late from a concerned um, husband? Oh. She is even fortunate. The husband has drawn her attention to it. Sometimes they don't talk. They just take their own decisions. Mm -hmm. And we, most of us working women have nannies or our mothers are there to help. But the word is help. They are yeah. helping. If you don't take care, your children will open up to the nanny more than yourself. The nanny gets to know the kids more than yourself. You cook a meal and she asks you who is it for and then you say it's for the kids then he tells you okay who doesn't like <laughs> <Indo -do? laughs> okay, who doesn't like fresh fish then you are shocked mm -hmm. because it's, it, it's it's you you don't know the kids because you are not there she, once the husband has drawn her attention to it it means that it is worrying him yeah so she needs to set boundaries she needs to make the office understand that she's married now she has uh, reproductive responsibilities at home so even as she wants to be productive at work she has to do the other one to to get a yeah. balance and if she doesn't take care a time will come she will experience a burnout and it's it's not the best it, you launch into depression and all sort of mental issues because of that i had um a, a, a guy who used to work for one of these multinationals, giving himself weekends, yeah, traveling up and down and all that, also having the same issue. Then one day he was called and was told that they are making his department redundant and mm -hmm. that they've searched through the whole firm. They don't know where to reassign him. So bottom line, you, you are being uh, sacked. Then he was crying and was like, all these years, I said, yes. You should understand. Nobody is saying don't be committed to your work, but it is hundred percent. So you give fifty to your work and fifty to your home, okay? So that you don't feel like all that you have done for them wasn't appreciated. It was appreciated because you were paid. You were paid for it. So the other angle that you needed to work on was the family. Now yeah. you've lost all this time because you were spending it on the office, and now they've said come home. These people you neglected are the ones on whose shoulders you are going to cry mm -hmm. so it, it's important that she looks at it she may she may have to adopt certain means of spending time with the husband and children even if it's one hour a week a day or uh, having activities together she may have to think of the cooking 
and maybe preparing the husband's favorite meal once a month, she may have to devise certain things because even as a married woman, when you are too stressed, in the bedroom, you can't perform. And then the slave is ready to perform. Then you'll be crying. Yes, so she, she really needs to balance her life or else she how, how, you know, how does How does the husband make her understand that she needs to keep that balance? Because the husband that has brought this... Um, this and sometimes after communicating, if the person is not willing to make changes, you, you have to use action to um, portray or convey your message, mm. whereby... The person comes home and is chatting with you and you don't respond. Because such a woman, I'm sure 50% of her conversation will be office matters. And my boss, this and this, this department, that and the, this unit, this. Uh -huh. So sometimes after conveying your, your, your issues, if the person still doesn't understand, you may have to use action. Okay. okay. I worked somewhere where I used to, there were times I used to get home like 12 a.m., 1 a.m because we were working on a project. And then we had moved to our current place. It was quite undeveloped. So my spouse has to stand at a certain junction to wait for me for us to come. He complained a bit, but the money was good, very good. <laughs> but it wasn't worth it. So what he did was after realizing I'm not hearing what he was saying, he stopped meeting me at the junction. And I, I'm, I'm scared, you know? coming all the way if somebody snatches your vehicle or rapes yeah. you or something so then i realized that actually the man now my life is in my hands so i have to do something about it so i started searching yes. mm. so sometimes you may need to use action to let her understand that he is not happy with what is going on and she should be careful because men <laughs> are, they, you, when you read the psalms you see that Service and worship was one of the things David used to win God because apart from the born in the he would just worship God and God will forget all that he has done. So as this nanny is cooking and washing and keeping the house safe and the children are there, before you see the, the man finds her more attractive than you. And mm -hmm. then you now say the devil and go to touch mortar forest. Meanwhile, all you needed to do was to balance. Yeah, so yeah. that's, well, that's okay. my advice. Well said, well said. Thank you so much. So moving on um, to the next one. Dear Trisha, I'm really at my wit's end right now. My job seems to be taking me more and more away from my family. We are always on one project or the other, traveling from one region to the other for work. My husband seems to understand, but I'm wondering how long he can cope. I have three growing kids who need my attention and madly care, but this is becoming difficult to give. We have decided not to have a house help or a nanny. And so my husband takes care of our children most of the time. I'm thinking of resigning from my job to take care of my children till they become of age and then go back to work afterwards. However, I know that my job pays me well and we need the money from both sides. Please, would you advise that I resign from my job to take care of, my fam of the family? If not, how do I ensure that my job does not affect my family life? Okay, with this one too, my, my, my advice to her is don't resign from work to sit home and take care of the children. That too, you'll be bored. We are talking balance here. So okay. if you leave the job and you're home alone, you'll be bored after some time. And then depression will come in. You'll just be there one day before you see you are crying. You don't even know why you are crying, but not, I don't know how to put that in English, probably. Uh -huh. So you, you need to change jobs. I've had um, two people, one from a bank. She was almost made a branch manager, but because of the stress, she had to quit. Fortunately for her, there's a private school near their house. She's teaching there now, and there's peace in their home. The school even comes with a package where the children don't pay fees. So she leaves the home with the children to school and they all come home. Her target is that when they finish JH, JHS and go to SHS, she will go back into her banking. Now she also has time to do most of the professional courses because yeah. I mean, with the teaching by four, she's home. She does the house chores and everything, prepares her lesson notes. Um, usually she does that even on Saturdays for the week. So she has mm -hmm. enough time and she's doing that. There's another one who was also uh, working. She was, she's a nurse. She's, she was working with one hospital. And you know this, they are locum tent. 
Mm -hmm. from here do five hours there do five hours here do six hours there put the money together and she's earning like 7k or 9k something yes it pays the bills like i said in the beginning but as you are paying the bills fire is burning some part of it so what she decided to do to was not to do any locum again when she closes from where she works that's it she comes home and then takes care of the kids so with this woman, since the husband is even there to help and there's no nanny, before she sees, there's a tilt in the family. The children are more conversant mm -hmm. and okay with daddy. So you have a girl who is menstruating and informs daddy instead of telling you. She has menstrual cramps and she tells daddy instead of you. She gets her first kid and she tells daddy. How would you feel? Yeah. Yeah, it, it happens because... Yeah. The, the, the child feels daddy understands me more than mommy. Mommy has never been there. So don't quit work. The bills have to be paid. Look for one that does not put so much stress on you. Set a target for yourself that you do that particular one for a number of years. Like I said, the first lady is teaching till the, the last um, child goes to SHS. Okay. Then she will quit. Yes. Fortunately for her, she has a class six a J1 and a J3. So it's more like a three years program she's doing now. So mm. By the time they go to SHS, that's boarding school, you are also at work. When mm. they are on vacation, you take your leave. The first week you are with them, then you go back to work so that there's a balance be, be, be between it. Okay. Can people also think of sending their children to grannies? That also has its disadvantage. If it is once a while for holidays and stuff, I'm okay. But if you leave them there throughout, granny is training them with granny stuff. <laughs> so if you, the person has, the child has uh, one of my children, we call him the uh, inspector, uh, what is it, Sherlock Holmes. When she, he asks you a question. So for instance, you tell him, today we are eating food. The next question is, what soup? Then you say, it. then what meat? Then you say, it. why are you using chicken and not meat? Mm -hmm. How many grandmothers can take that? You get it. Okay. Yeah. And then you also look at your own upbringing, the, the things that you did that, that your mother couldn't tolerate. You're asking yourself, can your grandma, your children. can she allow their grandchildren to go through it? And then there's also the ones that over pamper the children because yeah. they are making up for things they couldn't do for you. They want to do it for their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And then it, it has a way of messing up the, the upbringing. So mm -hmm. if it is once a while, like holidays, um, um, you want to have a second honeymoon, so you ship them there. That's okay. But to let them stay there throughout, mm -hmm. I am not uh, also for it. Uh, okay. Because it has its own issues. So mm -hmm. she should consider that. Her. And she has said it well that the fact that the man is not complaining doesn't mean he is cool. He's not exactly. cool. He's just tolerating it. Mm. And it's like the, the proverbial uh, this thing that in Suetaya Pronchini or Jewel. This one will keep quiet. The day you will make the noise, you will see that everything has left your hand. It has crashed to the ground. A pie. You can't mm -hmm. do anything mm -hmm. about it again. So don't be too happy with the fact that he's okay. He's not. He's not. Yeah. So so think of getting a more a less stressful job, sorry, a less okay. demanding job for some period of years and then you go back to the, the one you love. It's all part of the sacrifices we make for family. And mm. I tell you, it's worth it because I've been there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Now let, let's look at um, basics. So what we talk about, because we are discussing managing career and life or family life. So what we talk about career, what exactly are we talking about? So we are clear um, on our minds what yeah, we are talking about. A career is a, a vocation, an occupation, or a profession that you've done for a number of years. You've been trained in it, whether it is formal or informal. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes your career. So somebody can tell you that I'm a teacher, but my career is uh, early, early childhood development. Uh -huh. So it's different from a profession. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody can be a surgeon and he will tell you that his Career, what he's pursuing is maybe a, a ear, nose, and truth as his career. So, he, all the future training to do be on that line so that when we are looking for expertise on that 
aspect you come for so you are a doctor yes but you've built a career in that in that area and it should be something you've done for some time okay so that includes the training the trainings that you do or you get in in line with what you are doing and it takes yes. it, it develops over years yes okay yes. thank you so much so why is it important for us to actually um take care of our families and uh careers at the same time um it is important because when we are social beings okay we we, we belong to certain setups and apart from the fact that we are social beings it's it's it prevents burnout it creates a certain cushion the family creates a cushion for us and then the work also creates a means to have fulfillment and pay our bills yeah. okay i mean sometimes people will say that if you've achieved all the monies and things and you don't have anybody um, enjoying it with you then there's no need and typically the family is the first uh, yeah. group of people who benefit from all your efforts so it's it's important to have that balance so that you are not stressed you don't go through burnout sometimes you even become unproductive in the office if the balance is not well created there's confusion at home quarreling here and there with spouses children uh, vagabonds because mommy is not there they know that between eight and four dear it is never possible that mommy will be home so that's the time they would smoke the weed watch the pornography do all those kind of stuff because they know that you can never catch them yes and it creates all sorts of social vices as well so there's the need to balance it whilst we are earning the money to pay the bills earning the money to get the fulfillment we want we are also making sure that where we are getting the money to use that place to is well managed so that it's not like putting water in a sea mm -hmm. i think you've mentioned some of the consequences if you are not having that balance but beyond what you've said are there any more consequences when it comes to imbalance in life uh, in family and, and career lives yes um like i mentioned one of them is that you 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 become stressed yes. i don't know for other people but by friday 12 noon my mind is off work i may be working but it's it's my mind is off work i, I mean my mood yes. my me mood okay now if if i'm still working and it's something very serious i may not be productive from that 12 maybe noon on fridays mm. and that will affect if it continues then it will affect my promotion and my development in my career okay yeah. and then also if i'm not working how will i pay the bills how will i even pay the school fees for some these days how will you even marry even if you want to do the smallest ceremony, your father-in-law is taking his bright price. How uh -huh. will you pay that money? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For the and for the ladies, do you change the dresses? So your friends will know that you too, you have arrived. How do you change the dresses if you are not working? So it's it's like uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul kind of thing. So you need each other. Like you can't say that because you have this, you don't need that. You need to have that balance so that there's a certain, uh, how do I even put it? Sereneness, there's a, a certain perfection, a certain equilibrium, very good, that's the way, that you attain because you are working and you have a family. Because if you concentrate so much on the family too, your work will suffer. If you concentrate so much on the work, your family too will suffer. And the family suffering is more serious because when you go on pension, it's the family you need. You will need them. When you are sick, it is a family. Even if the, the your office is paying your hospital bills, who will visit you? Doctors mm -hmm. say that when it comes to healing, touching is like 20% of the healing. Who will come and touch you, hold your head, ask you how you are doing? Your HR, he be, the person may do it, but once prepared, mm -hmm. on you. If the person is the scary type and the, the sickness is in the medical world, for instance, at Kolibu, mm -hmm. but your family, especially your spouse and children, have no choice. They will be coming mm -hmm. and ask yourself if you've not treated them well, would they have that empathy, 
that uh, uh, agency to come and see how mommy is doing in the hospital or how daddy is doing in the hospital. So you, you really need to balance it so that no matter what happens, your happiness and joy is fulfilled for both sides because we need to work. The Bible admonishes us. So that it means that if, if you don't do that, the, the consequences are really die on, on your family yeah. life and on your career as well. Like you said, we need yeah. to we need to earn some money and take care of our basic needs. At the same time, we don't have to neglect the family. If we do, um, when we need them, when we retire and we need them, then they cannot be there for us because we're not there for yeah. them when they were growing up or when, the time when, 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 yeah. when you were working. Yeah. That, 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 is, yeah. that is great. That is great. And so that is the truth. Yeah, is it true? But is it really possible to achieve balance? Is it possible? to, to be is. successful at both the family level and also at your career level? Is it really possible? It is. It is possible. It is very, very possible. Sometimes in certain seasons, it may tilt towards work or tilt towards family, but it's, you can still get the balance you are needing. For instance, uh, depending on your work, let's say you are a medical practitioner in one of the COVID centers. I mean, COVID has become a peak for you. So that one, you will not be coming home. It's understood. And so the home will suffer a bit. But when the whole thing is over, I mean, you shouldn't do local. You shouldn't. So that you will spend time with the family when you're close from work. And then because you've been doing over time, the money's come. The children wanted flash screen, digital TV. Now you've bought it. You've added a console. You've given everybody a tablet to be learning. They are happy. Yes. So it's possible to achieve the balance, but it depends on how you also handle it. And then you should know that there are times it will tilt. There mm. are times it will tilt. For instance, if your spouse is sick in the hospital, you can't be as productive at work like you used to be because you may be visiting the person early in the morning before you come to work. Mm. When the hospital calls, your heart will jump and all that is there. But also ask yourself, before the tilting, how productive were you? So before the COVID, how were you at home? That now the COVID is requiring you to do extra hours so that your children will understand. Mm. But some people, their families don't know that there's a COVID. It's the same. When COVID <laughs> wasn't there, it wasn't coming. COVID is there too, it's not coming. The only thing we know now is that with COVID, we know he's in the office for mm. sure. That's the only thing. And it's not <laughs> the best. Uh, it's not the best. There should be some. <laughs> There is no doubt that that he's in the office. Are you sure? That he is in the office, yes. COVID will put you there. Yeah. Great. But some are saying that the balance, it doesn't necessarily have to be 50-50, like, like 100%, that you give 50% of your time to work and 50% to family. I don't know what your view is on this one. I, ideally, that is what we strive for. Okay. okay, my video will be off for some few minutes. My battery That's is fine. dying. I have to That's get fine. a charger. That's so fine. ideally, That's we fine. strive for the 50-50. And like I said on the Instagram thing, effort is more important. Like for the office, let your office, your boss know that you are putting in effort to, 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 to be productive, to yeah. give results. Okay, let them see you giving results. That one, they will be cool. They will be very cool with you and, and, and understand what you are doing, even if it's not balancing. And then at home too, let them see effort. That now you are not uh, bringing the laptop to the hall when you are watching TV and you are on the laptop trying to uh, send a message and do all sort of things. No, they see that once you are... On the on the on once you are home, you are home. Even if you are on the laptop, you are not working. Okay. Right. Maybe so okay. Getting something for them that they do. Uh -huh. So try to achieve the 50-50. Let the people involved see the effort you are making to draw you the line between work and home, or let's say family. Let them see the line. And let them see you putting efforts, activities, and practices to make sure you achieve this balance. And then it will be appreciated. 
Great, thank you. So that leads me to my next question. What concretely can we do to ensure that we achieve this balance? What are the steps you must take? What are the A, B, C, D things, or one, two, three things, or the activities we need to do to ensure that even if we don't get the 100%, at least we achieve some kind of balance? Uh, it's first, it's about discipline. You need to be disciplined enough to know that there's a need to have a balance. There's, it's, it's very important to be, because it involves work. Yeah. It involves a lot of work. Like um, sometimes I'm very tired, but I know that if I don't prepare this stew or this soup, my family will go hungry. So I will still stand and do it. And then everybody is okay. Sometimes it requires you saying no to certain invitations and programs. So the, the discipline and hard work is involved. And then you, when you, you come home, don't bring work home as much as you can. Don't bring work home. So I, I'm currently talking to some few people, advising them to get their personal laptops because with the COVID, most people are using their office laptops at home. So yeah. when you are on the office one and you are even doing your personal thing, your family people don't know. All they know is that you are still on the laptop. But when you shut that down and you pick your personal one, they understand that it's not work that you are doing. And that one too, you can still be chatting with them and be doing what you want to do. Don't mm -hmm. take work home as much as you can leave work at work. Even if you are working from home, leave it there. Let work be at work. And then, and then um, with the, the, the taking work, home, now that we work from home too, you need to have boundaries. Boundaries where, let's say your work starts at eight, there's a break at 12, you resume at one, and then you close at five. Try to adhere to these timelines. If you can, you want to add something to it, it should be a maximum of one hour then you close, you shut down. So for me, when I close, I announce it so that the children will know that I've closed for, for the day. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So there's a need to have that boundary. And then um, when, when you are also at the office, try not to bring home things in. Um, like you are there and you are saying, oh, I have to leave early today. I leave at four because I have to go home and cook. I have to go and do this. Sometimes it's a ball. Try to make home things home and work things with. And then have your me time. Develop a time for yourself. Even if it is 30 minutes a week, let it be your time where you are alone, reflecting, reading a book, watching a movie, or just chatting with your last one. You know, those little ones, those below six, they have interesting stories yeah. to tell. Just listen to them. Yes, and have fun. And then, um, if you are also working for someone, even if you are working for yourself, take your leave. It is a right. Go on leave. When they give you the days, take them. Take them. Mm -hmm. Some people can tell these days, huh? you don't know what they want to use it for. <laughs> take the leave. Go on leave. And when you go on leave, don't work. Some will take the leave and tell you that Miko uh, <laughs> yes, you won't get anything to do. You are on leave. You are on leave. And when you are going on leave, hand over properly so that they won't call you back before your leave period expires, so that they won't call you for certain information that you should have left for your team members to continue. Take your leave. Rest. If you can, go to your village. Go for sightseeing somewhere. Just take yourself off work issues. Spend time with the family. It helps. And then also you should let your family understand your work and how it is. If you are a doctor, you have to let your family understand that if I'm closing at 4.30 and an emergency comes in, I can't close. And depending on how the emergency goes, it can keep me for a long time. Bring them in one day to see how some of these emergencies are. Then they would understand your work. So let your spouse or your, and your children, family members, those who depend on you, let them understand your work and how it is. And if you can, take them to the work. And then also let your boss and colleagues understand your family situation. 
if you have an ailing parent, let them know. I'm not saying go and tell them that the person has a sore on their buttocks and the sore is big and they are maggot. No, 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 no. Just tell them, mommy, it's not well. And so I have to be taking her for medications and stuff like that. So let them understand your family situation. Sometimes the family situation is a normal one, but once in a while there are issues. Maybe your husband is misbehaving, quote and unquote, is putting stress on you. You have to let your boss know so that when the mood changes, when the productivity level falls, the person understands that it's because you are going through this. Now, because of these kind of things, what it means is that when there is nothing going on, you have to be very productive so that your past results will speak for you when such times uh, come up. Mm -hmm. So that, let's say now I'm single, I have to work in such a way that when I get married and my productivity falls, you can easily understand that it's because I am married. I'm not saying let it fall, but just in case it falls, you understand that it is because of this. But some people will not be productive no matter what. Then when you complain, that's when they want to tell you that it's because of my husband, it's because of my child, it's because, no, that doesn't help. It's not balancing. Mm -hmm. So let your boss and colleagues also understand your family situation. How many children do you have? Are they all living with you? Are you a divorcee? Are you still fighting over custody for the children? All those things, it helps. I'm not saying give the nitty gritties because yeah. some people feel they are giving up themselves too much. No. The person gets to know your situation and then knows how to best to help you. And then create times for activities, programs, and stick to them. So that, for instance, your children know that Saturday mornings, mommy washes. Okay, then they know that this is washing time. Your office people know that for you, on Fridays, no matter what, five K you have, you have left. I had a colleague, we, we, we use her to know that it's lunch time. 12 o'clock, guys, she'll pick the bag. 12, pe, 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 pe. So at a point, I thought she was on medication or something. But she said that's how she has decided to, because her work is such that if she doesn't set the alarm to eat, she might work through to like four before finishing to eat, which is also not good for her. Yeah. And she's had a, a situation where a friend had ulcer and had all sorts of complications. So 12 kinds, she'll pick her lunch and go and eat. So you need to also have that certain boundaries at work and at, at the, uh, in the house that will make people know that this is work time, this is family time, and have a beautiful way of communicating to those who depend on you for it. Another one is learning to say no. <laughs> That's a big mm -hmm. one. That That's a big, big one. one. Learn how to say it beautifully, being assertive. I understand I have to compute these graphs, but I am begging you, I can't do it now. Do you mind if I do it tomorrow? Or oh, I have so much on my plate. Can I do it next week? If it cannot wait, I think you should give it to Mr. A. He is very good with these things. And then also delegating. Delegate in the office and in the house. In the office, delegate to your team members. In the house, sometimes you bring in grandma. If you have older children, bring them in. You are cooking. You have a 10-year-old boy. He can cut onions. Let him cut the onions. That frees you time. Another person is peeling ginger. Another person is uh, doing this, it's time to blend. You put the things together, you give it to one person, blend. After every three minutes, stop the blender and start again. Mm -hmm. When everything is finished, you, you cut cabbage, you cut tomatoes. They call you, you come and mix, mix the things. You've cooked, but you've not wasted all the time in the preparations. Yes, involve people and then delegate sometimes. It's all it means to is to trust the people you are delegating with and following up so that you don't come back to do the whole thing all, all over again and still spending time that you wanted to save. We should all remember we have eight hours each. Eight hours each. That is for sleeping, uh, going to the washrooms. So that one, you can't do anything about it, at least eight hours. Then those of us who work for other people is eight hours by law. So that's 16 hours you have no control over. So the other eight hours, you have to look at it. If even traffic takes three hours out of that, you have the five hours to spend with family every day. How are you going to spend it? Sometimes what it means is to have a schedule. 
Monday is for child A, Tuesday is for child B, Wednesday is for child C, Thursday is for daddy. So when you come back from work, even though you interact with all, with all of them, you take that one inside and engage that particular child so that a child, you help the child to open up and share how their day also went. If you are privileged to be the one who picks your children from school, don't play shatawale for them and sing along. No, you can do that once a while, yes. But chat, ask them questions. Don't just say, how was school today? They'll tell you school was fine. But ask them, so the mass master, what did he teach you today? Did you understand it? If he says yes, then quickly you, if it's not a complex problem like X minus this times this, if it is simple addition, you can say, okay, so four plus seven, then you, you, you use it to engage them as you go home. And then what's one thing I also do is that if you invite me to a program and it is weekend, I, and those of you listening, if you want to invite me, just get to know. The least number of people who come will be seven. Me, my children, my nanny, and my husband. So that we'll use the time to be interacting. Yes, it also helps. So that the small time you have, you bond with the family. You bond with them. But learn to take time off. Deliberately do that. I'm on leave, no work. Most of the time when I take my leave, I go to my village. And beautifully enough for me, where my mother's house is, there's no reception. Unless there's a pool, I go and stand by the pool. But if I'm in the house, you can call, you won't get it. Uh -huh. Yes, maybe due to my position, once well, a while, I'll come and stand by the pool to check my WhatsApps and emails. But typically, if it is, I normally go like Friday. So the Saturday, Sunday day, pool, no mean come. No way, that's my day. So you have to deliberately do that so you balance. So you don't burn out. You don't burn bridges you need because you need it for the office. Because even when you go on pension, some of these networks will help you to also bring your children back into the places you've worked. And then you need the family too because when you go on pension, they are the cushions you have. So balancing is very, very important. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so, so, so much, Yvonne. But what about those who think that, look, if at, at this point I realize that I'm so stressed out, the work is so stressful, and there's no room for me to actually have that balance because I'm going to work even on weekends and it's been back to back. What really should I do? Because, like you said, stress also has its own challenges, you know, health challenges and all that. And the person may also need the, the job because you need the money from both sides. You know, the economy is saying that if it's from one side only, it has its own challenges. Open, <laughs> you know, it's it's annoying. Annoying. exactly. Yeah. So how, what can we do? Such a person in this stressful situation that is really taking her so much away from home. And not only that, the job is stressing her out as well. What should she do? Um, there, there's a saying that if you don't enjoy what you are doing, then you shouldn't do it. So, first of all, even if it is draining, de demanding, and you are enjoying it, you won't have stress. You won't have stress because I've worked in very stressful environment, very demanding environment, to put it that way. And because I enjoyed what I was doing, I didn't see it. And it was until I got married that I knew that Charlie. Yeah, I'm spending so much time on this work. I need to cut cut down on it, yes. And so the, you, you, you have to weigh it. You ask yourself, is it the money I need or my health is more important? And that's where you can put certain measures in place. I remember growing up, a friend of my parents, and they, 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 the woman is a pharmacist, and the man, I've forgotten what work he does, but he had a lot of time home for the kids so after some time the woman realized that no being abroad with these children and what we are doing we may not be able to even build a house in ghana so you know what go back home with the children i'll get my small sister to support you there i'll be here for two years and i'll come back so even though it was very stressful for her very demanding after the two years she came home they've built their own house and have a small pharmacy at home where she provides uh, some health services and then the pharmaceutical, whatever. 
as well. So you need to decide on your, it's a sacrificial thing. Because if you follow the money, my dear, things will go bad. Things will go bad. Sometimes even the job is such that, especially for the women, you may be miscarrying. Sometimes it is such that the men are not coming. So you are single, you are earning the money, but the men are not coming. Because for me, like this, I was in some village, be there. If it is not a cocoa crache, it will be a chief farmer. Yes. Because the teachers, they, they, they don't come. Once they see you are driving a land cruiser, they think it's yours. So yes. they, they don't even venture to ask your hand in marriage. And the cocoa crutches think they have the money to ask you. But you two, you are looking for an educated man to, to, to handle. So at a point, I remember most of us, the ladies, we, we started saying only women and children are passing. We don't see the men. Yes. So you look at all these things and you decide. I had a colleague who had to resign because she just kept miscarrying. Miss Karen, Miss Karen, and saw that no, if I follow these people, I won't have a child. So she left the work, went to teach for a year, and then back into the NGO. She has her kids now. So sometimes you look at the situation and make a decision. It may not yield the kind of results the other one was yielding, but it brings peace and creates the balance we all need. We don't go through stress, we don't go through a uh, uh, depression and we are all happy. Sometimes the work is not even demanding. It is not stressful, but you have a difficult boss. It's a good decision to quit because you need your sanity, you need your health, you need your peace of mind. Especially if you're above 40, I tell you, don't joke with these things. Before you see it, it's becoming something on your kidney, corroding it, just because you keep brooding and brooding and complaining. You become a negative person in the office just because of one boss and how the person treats you. Quit. Quit. There's a saying in Akansi, and don't know Go somewhere else. Yes, you may not earn that much, but you get your peace of mind and you move on. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you so much. Your final words before we let you go. Um, Sometimes we make our colleagues, our friends and family. You see that you bond with them. Yes. But remember, when you are going home, either you've been sacked or you change jobs or you are going on retirement, they don't follow you. Some of them even stop calling you as soon as you are no more an employee. So don't make them your family. Yes, have that nice cordial relationship with them, but make it professional. You need to also have other networks that helps you to balance your life. Like we have the HR network, which is made up of like-minded professionals. Some of us is the church, women's fellowship. They all help us to balance. Some people go to church and they only go to church. As nobody knows them. Even the usher that usher them doesn't know them. It doesn't help. It all helps with the balance, okay? So balancing is very important because both are needed, like I said in the beginning. You need the money to pay the bills for the people who depend on you. And you need the people so that you can also spend the money on them and have the fulfillment and the joy and peace we all need in the world. So balancing is important. Sometimes you may not get the 50-50 balancing you are looking for. The most important thing is let both of them see the effort that you are making to balance it and learn to say no. Mm. I cannot do this. Whether to your office or to your children, know how to say no. Even to your friends. They are inviting you one wedding. You go and do photo shoot. You go and do bridal shower. You go and do pray, whatever. Then the wedding day. Then after the wedding to Habba. Let tell them that I can only be part of the wedding itself. So and and then let them sorry, let them know the reason for it. Because sometimes people deduce all sorts of things into your refusal. So I cannot be part of all of it because on this day, that's the time I spend with Kofi. This day, that's the time I spend with the kids. On this day, I'm visiting my mother. So I can't really make it. And then they would appreciate it. Yes, they would appreciate it. So those are my last words. Thank you so much. Life, life balance or career family balance is very important. Don't let us compromise on that. And thank you so much, Yvonne, and thank you all of you for coming. Before we leave, 
let's understand this. Like the former CEO of Coca-Cola once said, in life you are juggling uh, uh, or you are throwing five balls into the air. One is family, one is health, one is spirituality, one is social life, and one is work. The other four, that is family, health, social life, and spirituality are made of glasses. When they fall, they are shattered and you can't do nothing about it. But the work is made up of rubber ball. So when it bounces, it falls down, it can bounce back. And so that, yes, that is what we need to do. So all aspects of it is very important that we keep the balance. Thank you so much for coming. God willing, next week we'll meet again on career coaching and mentoring brought to you by Sedat Consult. And please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified of our next video. If